Hello everyone, wherever you are in Europe, in the US, in Asia, we're really happy to have you here at this time. And um, my name is Olga, I'm from GMAT Club, and today we're hosting a session with the uh, Darden School of Business. We're having Whitney here. Whitney, thank you for, for being here. Um, please introduce yourself and then go ahead and later on we'll come back for question and answers so everyone can submit the answer, answers there in the comment box. Um, some of those will be answered straight away and some of those we'll pick up later. So Whitney, thank you. Thank you, Olga. So yes, greetings uh, to everyone wherever you are in the world. Uh, I'm here in Charlottesville, Virginia, and my colleague Catherine Alford is based out of the Washington DC area, and she's going to be helping answer some of the questions in the chat. So hopefully between the two of us, we will be able to share a whole lot more about the Darden School. So both Catherine and I are members of the admissions team and have been with Darden for many years. So I think we bring a, a lot of great insight into the experience. So I am go going to share a little bit about Darden and then I'll get into some general application uh, tips and advice that hopefully you'll find helpful. Uh, so if you walk away from this chat today, I hope that you take with you sort of these three main themes uh, to know about the Darden School. An incredible education experience, wonderful lifelong career and professional support, and then also a really incredible culture and community. And I will say during these days, uh, as we are all working remotely, um, uh, it has been amazing to be a part of such a strong community and something that has really helped me sustain uh, during these times. So I'll share more about a little bit of each of these. So one of the things that is the most signature to the Darden experience is the way that we learn, the way that we teach, the case method of instruction. This is all about high engagement learning, discussion-based learning. This is bringing real world business and organizational challenges into the learning environment, getting to talk through those with your classmates who come from all different backgrounds. And so we, it, through the admissions team, are looking to build this class of students that have expertise in all different areas. And so as you come together and learn together through the case method, you're able to bring your expertise, but also learn from your classmates. These are, you know, these discussions are led by our faculty. They are well known for being the world's best faculty, which is a pretty big accolade, but these professors love what they do. They love to teach. They love to get to know you as students and understand your background. All of that's going to be uh, brought into the learning discussion. Uh, but they also really enjoy getting to know you as a person. And we have this strong community. And a big part of that is this opportunity to get to know not just your classmates, but also faculty and staff on a deeper level. But at Darden, you know, our faculty, they are what we call the, the triathletes, if you will. So they are incredible teachers, but they also are researchers. And so they have their particular area of focus. They also stay really close to business. And what that often means is that they have consulting engagements. They continue to write cases, but they understand that it's not just business in the theoretical sense, but how does that actually apply? What can we learn uh, from what's happening in business now? They bring all of that to the learning environment as well. So a typical day or a typical week, if you will, as you go through your first year at Darden, you will have classes on Mondays through Thursday, three cases or three classes a day, which means three cases a day that you will prepare you have an opportunity to prep those cases on your own, but also with a small learning team, a study group. And then you also um, will then come to class the next day, as I said, and work through that with, with the faculty. On Fridays, typically students do not have class, but that's when they have club conferences, recruiting, and other academic prep. 
And we've got a, um, a picture and a quote here. Megan Bailey is our current uh, president of our Darden Student Association. And uh, big kudos to Megan as she as, uh, is leading uh, through an incredibly you know, challenging time, obviously, with the pandemic. And she is the voice for her classmates and advocating for them uh, and further helping strengthen the community. Something that uh, I know is on your mind, in addition to getting an incredible education, is certainly the career opportunities after you graduate. Um, so this is for the class of 2019. Uh, as you may be learning uh, in your research, uh, typically we will release the outcome of career um, placement uh, three months after graduation. So our career team just closed the books for the class of 2022, uh, sorry, class of 20, and we will be sharing that through our employment report and through other, you know, channels in the coming weeks. But for now, this is, uh, you know, some important stats, uh, some important things to know for the class of 2019. I call attention to the graphic over here uh, on the right hand side. This shows that our graduates are going all over the US and some of them are going international as well. But they're going to the Northeast, yes, but also many to the West Coast, the Southwest, the Midwest. And so that really speaks to the diversity of opportunities geographically, but then also uh, industry-wise and, and company-wise. So some of the top technology, consulting, financial services, general management opportunities, really incredible placement success and starting salary. Um, and so that's something, uh, you know, again, I know that this is a time that you're thinking about this education and what you wanna learn, but you're also thinking about how this education will prepare you for your professional advancement. Student life is huge at Darden. So you are going to be certainly active uh, in your academic work. The career recruiting process is, is very involved, but there's also that other piece of the student life, getting involved in clubs and organizations. So we've got many different affinity groups, career focused groups. Um, we also have different celebrations where in the, in the midst of selling, celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month, month and there have been many great uh, ways that uh, that community has been able to share about their values and experiences. Um, we've also been having um, Resilience Week uh, as our students go through exams and uh, the Resilience team has been coordinating different outlets for students to disconnect, to get outside, to get some exercise, some fresh air, uh, and to make sure they're taking care of their whole selves. We have many traditions at the Darden School, such as first coffee, a wonderful break in the day where students, staff, and faculty can come together. More recently, we've been doing that virtually. Um, we have other um, Darden stories, which has uh, become a really neat, more recent tradition where students uh, share their personal stories with their classmates. Um, you know, not just what do you want to do, what's your background, but really getting at more the heart of who they are as people. So all that to say, we've got this great diverse group of you know, students, staff, and faculty, again, who come from all over the world and have all these different interests, but we do come together as one Darden, and that is, uh, again, sort of speaking to that strong community that we have. This slide definitely will speak to some of the um, wonderful uh, sort of recognition that we've seen that we've received over the years um, from external organizations. And so, you know, a longstanding um, reputation for having the best education experience. I mentioned our incredible faculty, uh, you know, highly rated uh, for all their many contributions and their incredible teaching. Uh, we here at Darden, we're also part of an incredible university, the University of Virginia, one of the top public institutions in the U.S., um, an incredible health system, as well as an academic institution. We're in Charlottesville, Virginia. So for those that are not as familiar, um, you know, a, an incredible smaller city that is known for having a, a, a very growing VC um, 
base here uh, known to be happy um, in Charlottesville, as Catherine and I can uh, attest to. Uh, incredible cuisine, uh, and I attribute that to the great diversity um, uh, around the universe, you know, of bringing people uh, from the university all over the world, sharing their, their uh, wonderful specialties, cuisines, and culture as well, certainly makes the Charlottesville community community quite vibrant. So a little bit more about Charlottesville. This is a, a picture here of our uh, downtown mall, our pedestrian downtown mall, which is filled with shops and coffee shops and uh, music venues and, uh, and, and wonderful uh, cultural uh, and arts opportunities. Um, we're about two hours south of the Washington DC area, um, you know, a smaller population, uh, which I think really makes it, um, makes it a really approachable city. You know, this is a place not just at Darden, not just at UVA, but in Charlottesville, where you will be known, where you will run into people that you know. Uh, and I think that really allows to build uh, some pretty wonderful and deep relationships. Um, if you think about it, our students are, are typically moving from elsewhere. You know, very few have been in the Charlottesville community before. And so with that, I think that brings a, a tremendous mindset for, you know, wanting to make the most of their two years in business school and really get to know each other, uh, really fully explore the Charlottesville community as well. All right, I'll transition here and share a little bit about the admissions process as uh, I know that's probably uh, very much on your mind as well. Um, so this, this phrase that I'm sure you hear often, but you know, we certainly do take a holistic approach to um, your application. If you think about what I've shared about the Darden experience and how full and rich it is, through so many different dynamics. It's so much more than just, you know, going to class and getting a job, but it is very much around, you know, bringing your full self to this experience and, and being this full uh, contributor um, within our community. So not surprising, that's something that we really want to get to know you as a full person through your application. And so, yes, we're going to ask about your academic work and your professional experience. All of that gives us um, more information about who you are. We're going to ask some short answer questions that will allow you in your voice to share examples, share your experience, your accomplishments with us, your goals as well. Um, we also have added a new section that allows you to share a little bit more about your, your personal story, uh, completely optional, but it is a way for you to, you know, further share some of those details that may, you know, may be important to sort of who you are and what your values are. Just quickly here are our short answer questions that we're asking in this year's application. Um, I generally will uh, encourage candidates to think about the questions that the schools are asking. We spend a lot of time thinking about, discussing, um, uh, and, and finalizing the questions that we ask of you. And I really think they are representative of who we are, what we value. Um, and so really take that time to see, think about Oh, I wonder why the school is asking me this question. Um, and then also, how can I best share and answer that with a, an example, um, more depth that will show um, who I am and who I would be, you know, certainly within this community. We've had this question for years. Tell me a time or tell us what you'd want your learning team to know. And it's my favorite because it's it's quick. Um, it's uh, it's, you know, to the point, but it's it's so interesting to hear how candidates um, introduce themselves. You know, some people talk about more, you know, personal uh, introductions, some, you know, a combination of your professional as well as your personal background. And it's completely up to you. And it is, you know, just really your chance to say, this is who I am. Uh, we also have a diversity and inclusion question, uh, which is certainly an important value at the 
at the Darden School at the University of Virginia. And so this is uh, an opportunity for you to share an example with us about how this is you know, an experience that you've had uh, or a person that you've met, how they have impacted you. And hearing those reflections um, are definitely some pretty, um, pretty interesting and, and pretty moving uh, as we get to know you. Uh, we do have uh, a couple of application deadlines in the past, and then uh, we still have two more. So we're right in the sweet spot of this year's admissions cycle. Our next deadline will be in early January, and then our final deadline will be in early April. So there is still plenty of time to put together a strong application. Um, you know, I know that there are different components and, uh, and making sure that you are um, ready to put your best foot forward, but just want to, you know, call attention to those two deadlines. We also are a member of the Consortium for Graduate Studies and Management, and their first deadline is today, the 15th. And then uh, they also have a round two deadline in early January. So if that's something you're looking into, just wanted to make note that we are a member of the consortium. Another thing that may be on your minds is how to finance your MBA. And the Darden School is committed to helping our students uh, understand and finance this degree because we know that it is certainly a big investment, uh, a big investment of your time and resources, but an, an incredible investment in yourself. So uh, we do have loans that students, many of our students take advantage of that um, you know, will certainly help in financing. We do have scholarships as well. We've got our Distinguished Scholars Scholarship Program that includes some competitive scholarships that generally have uh, another step to it, including an interview um, or maybe a supplemental application. And then we have our merit scholarships. And for most of those merit scholarships, your application to Darden is what we will consider uh, you for with those merit awards. And then new this year, Darden has announced Access Darden, which is our need-based grants uh, program for qualified applicants. So with this vision to to help make this be on a more affordable experience and obviously Darden's commitment to helping you have multiple ways to finance your MBA. Just wanted to share some of these. So with that, uh, I would love to take questions and, and know that, um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of folks out there with um, probably submitting some questions while I've been talking. So Olga, catch me up. What's, uh, what are, uh, what's on people's minds? Yeah, we've got some, but I also must say, uh, Catherine has been doing a great job answering them. Um, uh, Whitney, th first of all, thank you for your presentation. It was really helpful. Uh, thank you for going into that details. We have some questions uh, which were submitted um, already before the presentation show, so I will start with, with those. So first question, and that's something what everyone is worried about considering the, the COVID-19 situation. Um, if an applicant is presently unemployed while applying, will it affect the chances of admission? What is your position on that currently? Yeah, thanks, Olga. I think um, that is definitely, uh, I can imagine, a question on many people's minds. And I know that many people have been Im impacted by the pandemic um, and certainly um, circumstances outside of people's control. So um, I think the easy answer is, is no. Uh, the more nuanced answer is we'd love to know what you're doing now. Um, so recognizing that, uh, you know, Again, circumstances outside of your control, perhaps you're unemployed. Um, however, what are, how are you spending your days? Um, are you, uh, you know, potentially job searching, of course, preparing your application for business school? But are there other ways that you can continue to get some experience, whether that's volunteering, whether that's working on a, a certificate program or something like that, where you're continuing to build your skills, you're continuing to network. And so there, uh, you know, 
while there may not be a question directly uh, asked of you in the application, I would suggest using the additional comment section as that place to maybe uh, clarify or provide some more information. So if you are unemployed, that might be a place just briefly to, to sort of highlight, you know, what are you doing now? What skills are you continuing to pursue? That type of thing, um, just to help connect the dots. Great, thank you very much. I think that, that this uh, calms many people down. <laughs> oh, good. Perfect, next one. How does admission committee view the applicants who have 10 plus years of experience compared to those who have four to five years of experience, which might probably be an average, right? Does Adcom prefer to keep average um, experience lower? Yeah, this is a great question and, and one that um, that we often hear from candidates. Um, and so I'm going to answer it in, in kind of from a couple of different ways. Um, and really, uh, there is no cutoff in, in terms of how much work experience you have to have. Is there, you know, this upper limit or lower limit? Um, and so, uh, as maybe we do in admissions, I'm going to provide some information that I hope is helpful as, as each candidate thinks about their own uh, candidacy and what they're looking for and, and how they may present, you know, through, through the admissions process. So, um, our average is for our full-time MBA is around four or five years of experience. At Darden, we have our full-time MBA, but we also have our executive format, which is for working professionals who generally have you know, 11 or 12 years of experience. Um, within each program, we see a range of experience. On the full-time side, it generally does tend to be between two and 10 years, um, but that's the range, you know, that's sort of the sort of um, probably 80 to 90 percent range or so. On the executive uh, format side, we see people on the earlier career, five years all the way up to 20 plus years of experience. Um, so all that to say there's no exact right time to get your MBA. So then it becomes thinking about what it is that you want from this experience um, and, you know, sort of what you're looking to do after you graduate. I talked about the case method of instruction, and I think that that's something to really think about depending on where you are in your career. When you're learning from your classmates as much as from the faculty member, I do think it's wise to think about who do I want to be in that classroom with? Who's really going to kind of help me and challenge me to learn more and sort of grow? So um, that's something thinking about between you know, kind of what the full-time MBA classroom experience might be versus the executive format. I also think it can be helpful to think about from um, a social, you know, aspect, you know, sort of, again, sort of knowing that this is a really strong, you know, tight-knit community and, and sort of where you are in your life and the types of experiences you might have. Um, the social dynamic it might be something to consider. Uh, in our full time, we do have students at all different stages, you know, from single to married to with children. Um, and Charlottesville is an incredible community to uh, to be no matter what stage. Um, but then we also have uh, with the executive format for working professionals, that's based out of the Washington, D.C. area. So proximity to, uh, you know, obviously a large metropolitan area, uh, opportunity to pursue your MBA while you um, continue to work, you know, the advantages to that. So that um, is one thing to think through. And then I would just say, lastly, the career element of it um, and, and sort of what types of uh, opportunities may be of interest to you after you graduate. Uh, a lot of companies that are going to have a very heavy presence on, uh, uh, you know, on the campus um, might be recruiting at a certain level within their organization. And so um, that may or may not be of interest or sort of where you are or what you're looking to do. Um, but there's certainly so many companies out there, uh, so many ways, you know, particularly through network based recruiting and things like that to, to go about it. So those are um, those are kind of the, the things that I think about um, as I, you know, want candidates that may be 
um, a little bit further along in their career, just to think about, you know, from our standpoint in admissions, you know, the more that we understand about where you are, what you're looking to do, you know, we're hopeful that we can help you find that great fit where you're going to have the most successful, uh, you know, rewarding experience. Great, thank you for this uh, food for thought. I think this has been helpful for, for everyone. Uh, but so now I'm gonna bring up my question. How about people on the other side of this 80% range? Let's say people with uh, yeah with uh, some shorter work experience or maybe even uh, graduates, what opportunities are there for, for such applicants and um, what should they focus on while applying? So yes, yeah, so generally the, the earlier career applicants, um, I, I kind of bring up the case method again because uh, it is important that through the admissions process, we get a sense of what, what you will bring to this learning community and sort of the depth of your experience or um, sort of an expertise that you might have, exposure that you've had to different industries. Um, you know, we're looking to know that you will contribute to those classroom, those case discussions uh, as much as you are going to learn from them. And, you know, having the benefit of working at Darden for as long as I have, um, you know, I do hear alumni often talk about just the importance of having had some experience before business school to draw from, to recognize, like, you know, there's generally not a right or wrong necessarily answer in business, but how do you sort of have these, you know, experiences? How do you learn to work with different types of people, learn about different industries? And so having some work before business school, I think can really make the experience that much more valuable. I think you have a stronger sense of what you want to get out of business school, what you think you may like to do afterwards, and then certainly having these experiences to draw from. Um, but Olga, to your question more specifically, you know, how would I advise an earlier career candidate? Um, I think, you know, we're going to look and try to understand, you know, opportunities that you have had to take on leadership roles or work on teams. And so if you're earlier in your career, we recognize you might not have had a chance to do that in your job yet. But what have you done in your undergraduate work? When were you able to lead a club or, you know, be a member uh, of an organization? What are you doing in your community um, that might uh, allow you to gain and practice some of those important leadership skills? All right. Yeah, that's, I think we have quite some questions about that topic. Also the one, I'll bring up another one, which is um, kind of connected to that. Yes, um, how can applicants who do not have adequate leadership experience get a shot at admission? I would even like go further and say, yeah, uh, how do people who do not have management experience yet uh, stand out because many of the applicants say, oh, I have never led a team. How do I show that? How do I prove that I'm a leader? Yeah, a great question. And, and maybe, um, you know, there, there's a little bit of a philosophical response there, too, with, you know, I, we talk a lot about leading from where you are. And so while you may not, while candidates may not have had an official leadership title or management of people, um, you know, how have you been able to take on a leadership role, helping coordinate on a team? Or has there been a project that you've been able to um, step up and, and take a little bit more ownership of? So I think that there are opportunities to talk about leading from where you are and how that might mean communicating up down, you know, sideways within your organization. Um, you know, I think a lot of uh, companies will have uh, affinity or other community engagement uh, opportunities. Perhaps there's an, a chance to uh, get more involved and to um, potentially take on a leadership role. Um, I also think your letters of recommendation can be a really great way to help build out, uh, you know, 
who you are and sort of your your accomplishments within the context of knowing that recommendation writer. So they can oftentimes speak to the organization and maybe how it's organized and how you have been able to lead, uh, again, from where you are in your current role. Um, we totally get all of that. And so I think it's just really important that you are able to articulate the accomplishments, the skills that you've learned, um, certainly knowing that you're looking to an MBA to continue to build upon your leadership experience and to hone uh, many of those important skills and practice those as then you go on, uh, you know, and further in your professional development. Thank you very much. This was helpful. I think we have even more questions coming in about future uh, year scholars. So could you uh, tell more about that? Not only answer this question, what separates future year scholars versus another senior college graduates, but generally about, um, about this program and the opportunities it gives? Yes. Um, so, well, first off, you know, shout out to Catherine, who's helping in the chat. So she is our uh, one of our future year scholars uh, experts on our team, and she's you know been with the program from the beginning. Uh, but we launched this maybe five years ago, um, and uh, so it is a deferred admission program. And so, as a college senior or in a fifth year master's program, you can apply to Darden, uh, apply for admission. And then if offered through this deferred admission program, be able to matriculate uh, after gaining some experience. So working either two, three, four years uh, and then coming to Darden. So the Future Year Scholars Program um, is, is an incredible opportunity. I, I think for many people, um, it opens up this uh, opportunity to sort of have a, a knowing that they have this uh, chance to go to graduate school down the road in a couple of years. And so how do they really want to maximize their time beforehand? Um, and so I think there's, you know, through this program, we offer some uh, neat opportunities for students to network. Um, we consider future year scholars uh, part of the Darden community, even though they've never yet taken a class at Darden. We invite them to uh, some of our alumni events. Um, we also, um, you know, we also uh, provide some career resources. So just the other day, Catherine and one of our colleagues on the career team hosted uh, a career webinar and really talking about the importance of sort of managing your career, especially so early on. Um, so that all to say, you know, it's a phenomenal opportunity. If you are a college senior or in a fifth year master's program, please check it out. Um, you know, what a great way to uh, you know, potentially get admitted to a, a fantastic program. Uh, and I think that just, again, kind of unleashes a lot of opportunity. Um, Edward, to your question, it would be pretty rare that we would offer to someone directly from college, direct, you know, to begin their MBA right after they finish their undergraduate work. So, um, you know, our students do have, for the most part, um, you know, four or five years of work experience. Um, some of our students that may choose to start in another graduate program like law school and then potentially matriculate at Darden are, are sort of the exceptions of those with more limited work experience. But for the most part, we're looking for students that have, you know, two years is a sort of general rule of thumb, but again, no, no hard cutoffs. Um, but while I'm talking about our incredible career team, um, I think one of the resources that I'd love to highlight, um, and this is something, you know, for our future scholars when they matriculate, and then certainly for all of our incoming students, we have our career development Y-finding, which is our online self-paced module that uh, the career team created uh, two years ago now. And, uh, you know, an incredible way for students to um, learn uh, about the different industries and what it's like to recruit in consulting or for investment banking and technology. Uh, there are also some assessment tools as part of that so that students can, or incoming students, I should say, can continue to really 
think about, you know, what their skills are, what their passions are, what are these opportunities that they might be able to explore uh, during their time at Darden. And then there's also a chance to have their career check-in meeting with a member of our career team the summer before they matriculate. Uh, there's also, um, you know, working on their resume, putting it into a business school format, things like that. So CDY has just been an incredible resource, enabling students to get a jump on things. Um, you know, last year we launched CDY in March, um, well before, you know, the August start of school. So giving students a, a jump start. Um, but also to be able to manage it, you know, it is self-paced so they can do it on their own time uh, and sort of work through that. So that's been definitely pretty, um, I think, something we're very proud of and, and gotten great feedback from students. So cool. Thank you very much. I wish I were younger. <laughs> I, would not, I would only jump in. This sounds very cool. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, great. Thank you very much. I want to remind everyone that, um, yeah, the session is live, but we, of course, are recording it. So you will have uh, access to this video also afterwards and also to the chat. So um, if you didn't see some of the links which we've been providing also moderators are there providing different links to resources um, to the website of darden you can still check it up later yeah. all yeah. right and then we talked kind of about the the initial the funneling stage uh, who should apply and how um how folks should present themselves let's jump to the next point which is the interview phase which is currently running for for the round one right yeah. and of course also for the following rounds it's a very um important question what are the criteria of selection in the interview process apart from test course and work, work experience yeah, a, a great question. Um, you know, the way we've set up our evaluation process, it's sort of before the interview and after the interview. And the before interview evaluation is generally, you know, can we see this person at Darden? Do, do we think this person has potential? And we generally are going to interview um, uh, a large, uh, a large percentage of our applicants. It could depend on each round how many we ultimately will interview. But we are always going to err on the side of let's have a conversation with this person and learn more. Um, so that's you know kind of the you know criteria, if you will. We're going to be looking at your full application um, prior to inviting you for an interview. And, you know, for any of the any of you out there that uh, may not be applying in this admission cycle or um, and might be shooting for next year, uh, we do have early action, which is our first round. Uh, and that allows you to self-initiate your interview. So you don't need to wait to be invited. But then once we get into round one, which is our second round, um, but rounds one, two, and three, we do have an invitation to interview policy. Um, so if you're invited to interview, um, it's great. I mean, this is a chance for you, all that hard work, all that time and energy, you know, you've put obviously into your academic and professional career and putting, putting that together into your application, you really get to bring that to life in the interview. You get to share more uh, about who you are, kind of, um, kind of add that more context um, to, to your story. You also get to continue to learn about, about Darden. Um, and so I, I see it as an opportunity to, you know, not just share who you are, but also continue to, to get to know us. Um, but it, it's always our favorite uh, part of this evaluation process. Catherine and I both love to interview because you learn so much. You meet some incredible people. And truly, this is where I think the energy and the passion can really come through for what you want to do and for Darden and um, the impact that you want to make. So. Um, Again, sort of see the interview is, is really your chance to shine. Um, it's important, you know, to be professional, uh, you know, to present yourself well. We're interviewing um, all virtual via Zoom these days. Um, so, uh, you know, while, while not in person as we, you know, 
prefer to do when we can. Uh, Zoom has been, you know, just a, an incredible way to connect with someone face to face. And, you know, if someone's passionate about something that comes through, you know, through the camera just as much as it does in person. So um, see that in interview is a great chance to, um, you know, continue to tell your story. Make sure that you also think about questions, information that you'd like to learn. Uh, come prepared maybe with some, some questions in advance. Depending on the school, you, you may interview with a, a member of the admissions team or with a student uh, or with an alum. Uh, and so it's always good to think about who you're interviewing with, know your audience, and then you know I think that that can um, help you think through what, what questions are most appropriate. Great, thank you very much for these words. I think for, for everyone who is also worried about the upcoming virtual interview, this is nice to hear. And I would also add it up from, from my side. Guys, if you have this passion, a genuine passion about your career vision, about the university you're applying to, this will definitely come across. Just, just be genuine. This is, I think, the most important in a virtual interview. Yes, and it, maybe I'll add to that, Olga. Um, so, you know, keeping eye contact uh, uh, in in Zoom is different. Um, and, uh, you know, I've noticed from time to time candidates might have notes down on the, on the side or to the, you know, off on the screen. And so it can be tempting to have that. But my my hope is that you would come and you know, even though it's a little bit different staring at this uh, camera, you know, that there is that way to engage with the person on the other end. And so, yeah, something to keep in mind, too. Yeah, totally. I mean, I myself even I'm having a, a sticker here uh, next to the camera so that I'm watching directly there, yeah. not somewhere yeah. here. <laughs> and it's also written smile. Yes, that's important. <laughs> that's a good tip. So <laughs> great. All right. So um, we have another question, which I think is also very interesting. Um, okay, folks who are coming from business and seek to just transition to other industries, but still within business, I think that's a pre pretty clear path. But yep. what about recruitment opportunities for nonprofit and social impact and even government industries? Yeah. And we, we always see students um, pursue these paths and maybe it's immediately after they graduate. And, and then I think that number continues to grow as people continue on in their career. Um, I had mentioned earlier sort of Darden's proximity to the Washington DC area. So we've got incredible relationships there and only further, you know, sort of reinforced and, and incredible um, relationships, you know, nurtured through having our now Washington DC classroom space. So not just sort of the relationships, but actually having a physical presence there in uh, in that area. And so um, some really neat, you know, partnerships, uh, opportunities there that students can leverage. We've got um, a couple of different initiatives, the Tri-Sector um, Fellows Program that is specifically designed for business students, public policy students to um, you know, work together, but also continue to learn about that intersection, uh, the private and public sectors, um, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, we've got some clubs that uh, have that focus um, with our, um, our um, IBIS, our Institute for Business and Society, and that Business and Society Club. Um, and then we also have Net Impact, which has uh, a social focus, social impact focus. And so uh, there are many different ways that students can pursue these types of opportunities. Um, uh, you know, and again, if that's immediately after they graduate or um, further on down. Um, you know, if you think about sort of the types of companies that come to recruit uh, on an MBA campus, a lot of times they are going to be larger for-profit, you know, multinational companies because they have the need for talent, they have the resources to have that presence and to have a very formalized recruiting process. There are some large nonprofits that do recruit at Darden, um, but there are also you know, many, many more out there. Um, so that's really where more of this network-based uh, recruiting comes in. 
Uh, the newest hire for our Career Center, Michelle Rankin, her focus is actually on, um, in our world, we call it on-grounds. Uh, grounds are our campus. Um, so we've got our on-grounds, which are sort of these, you know, big name banks and consulting firms. But then there's the off-ground search. So that might be more niche, um, more nonprofit, more social impact focus. And so Michelle's, you know, her focus is to work with our students that have those interests and in helping them understand what are the great resources available to them through Darden, through UVA, through their own networks, their classmates' networks, and then how best to, you know, really go after these types of opportunities. All right. Great. Um, yeah, maybe just to, to, to continue on that, I think this will be the last question uh, we're taking today. Um, how does Darden help students who want to transition into a new function? It's written here before the start of the program, but maybe you could add some words um, yeah, during and maybe even after the programs, uh, whether you have any support for alumni as well. Yeah, great question, Olga. Um, so certainly, uh, you know, mentioned uh, our career development why finding. Um, that's going to be your number one resource before you begin. Uh, then we have a admitted student portal that our career center is offering some great resources to. Um, and, uh, you know, more and more companies uh, are interested in talking to MBA students even before they begin. Um, so any type of summer pre-MBA, summer type of uh, exploratory opportunities, our career center will post those on our admitted student uh, portal. Uh, you have that career check-in uh, that I mentioned. Um, and then, you know, there are other um other ways that, that students are, are going to certainly be getting ready um, and thinking about how they can best prepare for a career transition. Um, then when you start school, we've got, you know, sort of wonderful career education sessions uh, to help you understand more about, you know, these different industries, the different types of opportunities within them, best practices in doing your due diligence, you know, best practices in networking, and things like that, uh, getting your cover letter, your resume in shape. Then you're going to have companies coming on grounds, uh, opportunities to network with them. So through all of this, you know, you are going to continue to get a lot of great exposure. Um, you know, you're going to have access to these amazing resources. And so as a student, really, your opportunity is to take advantage of all of these and then, um, you know, certainly make sure you're positioning yourself and, and seeking out these these types of um you know, career uh, opportunities. Um, I think I said opportunities one too many times. Um, <laughs> so I also should have actually started by saying the vast majority of our students at Darden are career switchers. So that's the name of the game that, you know, the MBA, this incredible educational experience at Darden, that's going to help you pivot in any number of directions. And so really the whole process is going to be set up to help support you through this. Um, so like I said, before as a start of school, and then you're going to go through the internship search process, have your internship, and then you're going to come back. And for some of our students, they're going to say, yep, that was it. That's what I want to do. Some might say, you know what, I want to go through re-recruiting. We've got a whole prop program and sort of uh, resources to help students that are re-recruiting in their second year. And then specifically, Olga, you asked about resources after you graduate. We do have our alumni career services, a dedicated team that works with our alumni at any stage um, of their professional career. And it can be making another move because that's likely, of course, um, but it can also be salary negotiations, thinking about, you know, maybe starting your own venture, things like that and this is a team that can be a great resource to help you think through talk through this get some career coaching they also host uh, many different webinars to help uh, you know in this professional development area uh, one of their longest uh, standing programs has been for women looking to re-enter the workforce after um, after starting a family, things like that, that can be so helpful. Um, and, and again, you know, at so many different stages of your career. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. 
Um, wow. Um, I saw just one small comment. Just wanted to say hi, Bill. <laughs> How are you? Nice to see you. That's great. I see that um, it's even possible to connect here via uh, MBA Spotlight. All right. I think um, I think we should wrap, wrap up. Thank you very much for being here, for your invaluable advice and insights about Darden. Um, also, Catherine, to you for answering the question and to the, the team of moderators helping. Um, if you wish to research, you wish, if you wish to learn more about Darden, please go on the website, you will find a lot of answers to your question. If still the question is unanswered, then reach out to the admission team. They will be always there to answer your questions. And also at GMAT Club, we have a dedicated thread to um, for Darden applicants. And also you can connect with other people interested in applying. Um, thank you very much for being with us and see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you, Olga. Thank you, everyone.